Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Chivita Christie and in this video we are going to see uh, data models and specifically ER model and we are going to see an ER diagram for a university. And then we'll see how to convert that ER model into a relational model. So let's start. Now given here is what uh, we'd call a schema diagram. Now what a schema diagram basically shows is uh, which relations are there and along with the relations it tells you what attributes are present in those relations and whatever is underlined would be the primary key and then as you can see there are lots of arrows going in and out everywhere so what that means is uh, if you if you consider course then you can see that there are some arrows coming towards course id so what those arrows mean uh, is that they are foreign keys that means course is being used uh, course id is being used as a foreign key from the relations from where these arrows are coming out so for example section is using course id but it is not a primary key, it's a foreign key. And that's why you can see that there's an arrow going from section to course ID here. Then you can see this, this relation called prereq is using course ID, but it's not a primary key. Again, it's a foreign key, which is why again, you can see that there's an arrow going from here to course ID. And also prereq underscore ID is using course ID as a foreign key. So there's an arrow going this way. So before I begin converting this into a, an ER diagram, uh, let's first just understand what this uh, whole schema is about. Okay. So I've already told you that there is course and what course contains is course ID, the title of the course, the department name, uh, where the course is being taught and the number of credits of that course. And we'll just follow the arrows. So we have department name, which is taken from the relation called department, where there is a department name uh, primary key. So this is a foreign key in course. So department is simply uh, whatever departments are there in the university, their names, building, and budget. This is what is stored here. OK. Now there is nothing going out from department. So uh, let's just see what's go coming inside. So we have student and if you see, then a student is doing several things. One thing is that the student belongs to a particular department here. So what you have basically is department name taken as a foreign key from department and you're storing ID of the student, the name of the student, and total credits earned by the student. Every student is having an advisor. So that advisor is created using SID and IID, and SID is the student's ID, which is taken from the student table. Okay. And what is IID? IID is taken from the instructor table. So every instructor is an advisor to some student, and every student is having an advisor as an instructor. So instructor is having ID, name of the instructor, the department name where the instructor belongs. And again, department name has been borrowed from the department relation. And instructor has a salary. Okay. What else does the instructor do? The instructor also teaches something so what what does the instructor teach the instructor is teaching some course so we'll get back to the teachers table in a bit i'd like to explain what is prereq prereq is a recursive relationship which you'll see when we make the uh, diagram and also it has been explained in one of the previous videos too so what prereq means uh, that there's a course that you need to do before you're able to do some other course so, for example, if you wanted to study uh, an advanced, uh, you wanted to study advanced ER model concepts, then you'd have to know the basic ER model concepts. So that is what prereq basically means. Okay. 
and then what you have is prereq is uh, having two things one is the course id and one is prereq id so what that means is this is the course and in order to do this course you require a prerequisite course which is here so this is the prereq id which is why it is used in that way okay and what else do you have so course is um, assigned to a particular section and what does the section contain the section contains uh, a course ID, it contains a section ID, the semester in which it is being taught, the course is being taught, and the year in which it is being taught. And then there's also a building where it's taught and the room number where it's taught and the time slot. And this whole section thing is connected to the classroom in this way. So classroom is simply having a name of the building where the classroom is located, the room number, and the capacity of the classroom and from here as you can see building and room number both are borrowed in the section relation so when we are trying to connect student with a course we are not connecting student directly with a course we're trying to connect student with the section and the reason is that um, you want to also provide the building and you want to provide the room number and everything you don't just want to give that this is the course being taken by this student so, which is why we have connected it in this way. So, a student is taking a particular section. So, you can, you can see it right here that takes is having ID taken from student. So, this is a foreign key right here. And it is also using course ID taken from section, section ID taken from here, semester and year, everything taken from here. And then there's also a grade attached. So which grade is the student receiving upon taking this particular section? That is what's happening here. And for time slot, you have time slot ID, the day, the start time, and the end time. And here you can see that time slot ID is borrowed. Uh, so it's, they are both connected here. Time slot ID from here and here. So this is again borrowed. OK. So. I think I've explained to you the entire schema now and what you need now and yes you can have that instructor is also teaching a particular section not just a particular course so which is why again instructor is also connected to section uh, through teachers teachers also contains ID which is borrowed from instructor and it contains course ID section ID semester and year which are all borrowed from section so this is what your schema looks like and although it's a little it might seem a little bit complicated but uh, whenever you are asked to uh, make it make a schema or design a schema you're not necessarily asked to make something so big or so complex something simpler like uh, which which i've made in the previous videos which relates to to employee is also fine now the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to see the ER diagram of the university. Whatever schema we saw previously, now it has been converted into an ER diagram, which is right here. Now, the thing about this ER diagram is that um, it might look a little bit complex, but when you try to see it with the previous uh, schema diagram, you relate it with that. and you'll find out that it's actually pretty simple. Also, one more thing. Uh, previously, whenever I've taught you to draw an ER diagram, I've always uh, shown to you uh, that there are attributes in circles, right? Uh, I've always created attributes using ellipses. But in this case, if I were to use attributes and show them as ellipses, what would happen is, uh, this would this would become very very complex right now so I do not want it to look very complex and which is why I have created this in this manner you have the department which is the the entity and all the attributes are just listed out down here so this just makes the design look a little bit neater and you don't have to worry about 
placing all those ellipses and connecting them. So you can use this alternate notation. This is available and you can use it in case you do not want to create all those attributes. But remember that um, you should use those ellipses if you are creating a very small diagram, then it would look better if you used the ellipses. It's not compulsory, but it would just make it look better. So if you used ellipses, it would be nice for a smaller diagram, but since this is a large one, you can skip it and draw it in this manner. Okay, uh, so let's get started one table at a time, one relation at a time. So let's see. From the schema diagram, I have, uh, I'd like to begin with course. So what do you have with course? You see that course and department are connected. So that connection is preserved here. Uh, you can see that course is right here, course, yeah. And it is connected to department here. Now every course is obviously connected to some department. It has to belong to some department, which is why we have created double line here. Double line means total participation. And the relation between course and department you always have to create a relation because we are creating an ER diagram. So that relation we are showing in the form of a rhombus here. And if you cannot think of a very interesting name to give to that relationship set, you can just um, uh, merge the names of the two entities and just write down course underscore depth. That is all right. And one more thing, one course is associated Sorry, many courses are associated with one department. So there's only one department, but that one department can have many courses. But uh, one particular course would be associated with only one department. So which is why this is a, a form of a many to one relationship right here. Many to one if you look at it from course to department. So courses, many courses, one department. So that type of a relationship, that is why we have an arrow here, right here. Okay. Now, another thing we have with course is it is also connected here with prerequisite. Now, if you haven't already watched the previous videos, I can go ahead and look at the videos explaining at the video explaining the relationship types of relationships. So one of those is a recursive relationship when the entity set has a relationship with itself. So this prereq that you see here is actually a relationship set. It's not not a not an entity. So which is de uh, depicted here in this manner. You have course, and uh, of course all all its attributes. I'm not going to verify that, but you can see that prereq is the relationship set which is attached here directly. So it is simply attached here and what is given to you is that this course is using the course ID and prereq ID. Two things are coming from here and both the things are attached with each other. So this is what your course uh, entity looks like and this is the relationship which is a recursive relationship among them. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to see something in between, which is right here, instructor and student. So I've already explained to you this part of the diagram, this part, course, course step and department. Now I'm going to sh explain to you this big uh, kind of a rhombus shape that you see in the middle. So for that, first we're going to start with instructor, advisor, student. As you can see in the previous uh, diagram here, Yes, uh, you have instructor here and you have advisor here and you have student here. So in such a case, when you, when you look at advisor, you'll come to know that there is SID and IID and both are borrowed. So you are not seeing any extra attributes and usually when, when there's a relation like this in your schema diagram that does not have any extra attributes inside other than the borrowed ones, then it's most of the time a relationship set and not an entity set when you convert it into an ER diagram. So this can be just, uh, this is borrowed from here, this is borrowed from here. 
So all you need to do is connect instructor with student using advisor. So which, which is what is being done here. This is instructor with all its attributes, student with all its attributes and advisor. And we are not uh, showing any of the attributes of advisor. If you remember, uh, if you recall, it's written here SID and IID, but we do not need to show that in the ER diagram. The reason being, it is a relationship set and whenever you're creating a relationship set, it um, always combines the primary key from here with the primary key from here. So you do not have to worry about showing those attributes. You, sh you should show an attribute if you found out that it was a descriptive attribute that was attached to the relationship, in which case you would show it, but here there are only two, so there's no need to show. Now again, I'd like to point out that there's an arrow here. What that means is one instructor can be an advisor to many students but one student can have only one instructor as an advisor. So one student is not going to be assigned multiple instructors at, as advisors, uh, which, is, which is why, again, this is a one-to-many relationship. If you look at it from the point of view of instructor to student, then it is one-to-many. If you look at it from student to instructor, then it's a many-to-one relationship. So it just depends on your perspective. And with this, I'm going to end this video right here and I'm going to explain the remaining uh, ER diagram to you in the next video. So see you there and thank you for watching.